You know, this year, um, even though we we had challenges, of you guys, as you guys know, I mean, the whole world been going through a challenge. Um, but you know, as a church, we were able to strive and do some good stuff. You know, I just want to highlight a few of them, and just give honor to to, to those who. Um, participated in those events that we had and I want to begin um, by, by giving thanks to the, the ladies ministry who is headed by my wife amen they had a wonderful tea party in the year you guys remember that a fashion and tea party thing and um, anyway it was good it was really good uh, but, they, but, but they were also able to raise at that tea party more than $15,000 that went towards the purchasing of the land behind us. Amen? Amen. So we want to thank God for, for, for that event and for my wife um, and all, all those who assisted her to put that event on. And also we, during the year, I've asked for the last two years, I really want to give thanks to the storehouse ministry. Amen. 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 And we were, we were able to give out, what, hundreds, right? Hundreds of, of, of hampers during the last two years just to help families as, we are, as, as people go through this rough time. You know, you guys know how it was when people were out of jobs and stuff like that. And, and, but, but thank God for the storehouse ministry. We were able to, to, to accumulate a lot of food stuff and we were able to bless many, many families. So let's give it up one more time to the storehouse ministry. Amen. And why is it that, dude, I want to encourage you guys, you know, um, from, from time to time, even on a weekly basis, I want to encourage us, even on a weekly basis, when you make your groceries, just put one can aside or, or, or a little pack of rice, a little pack of salt, or whatever it is, just put it aside and bring it to church, you know, and, and let's, let's continue having a storehouse here for when times come that we can be able to, to help those that are in need. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to say something again <laughs> on that note. You know, you know, Jesus said, you know, when I was in prison, you could have visited me. When I was sick, you know, you could have come to my, to my bed. You know, the disciples said, you know, but you, you never did any of these things. He said, but when you did unto the least of them, you have done unto me. I want to say to you guys, it is just as spiritual to give a can of milk or a pack of salt as it is to pray for someone and get them healed. It is just as spiritual. Amen. So I don't want you to think that when you're doing this, it's just something minor you're doing. No, you're doing something spiritual that can impact somebody's life. Amen. You know, the Bible says the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. You know, when, when people are blessed in the natural, they, they, be, they, 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 they encounter the goodness of God. And that caused their heart to turn to Him. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage us, you know, as a church this year, for us to really step up in, in, in bringing food stuff so that we can distribute in times of need. Amen. I also want to um, thank God for the children's ministry. You know, they had. Amen. <laughs> you know, this year, you know, it's headed up by, by, by Sandy, amen, and, 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 you know, we want to thank God so much for, 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 for what you guys did during this season. You know, we haven't had kids church for, for more than a year. Huh? Basically, right, for more than a year, but they were able to connect with the kids through Zoom every week. So I, I really appreciate you guys. Let's give it up again for the Kids Church. Amen. And I want to also give it up for the Kingdom Dreamer Zoom. Amen. You know, the Zoom, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's been a lifeline for the young adults. You know, I, let me tell you guys something. <laughs> I've been told that the Zoom meetings go sometime beyond midnight. <laughs> you know, it, it, you know it, it's been a real blessing. And I'm seeing, I'm really seeing an advancement in the young adults. Amen. 
You know, and I want to thank God for, for Aaron and, and, and Yanni. Amen. This is a Aaron <laughs> and his wife Yanni. You know, they're doing a great job with the young adults. Let's give it up for them. Amen. And also, I want to thank God for the worship team. How much you guys saw the last, the last night of worship? It was incredible. It was incredible. I, I was so such a blessing. I think we should just make DVDs for everybody. You know, so it, it was just, it was such a blessing. And um, not only just the, the night of worship, but these guys, you know, did worship. When, when we were on the lockdown, they came and they did worship and they videotaped the worship. And so we can have, I want you guys to enjoy the Zoom worship on the Sunday mornings. Amen. When we couldn't come out to church. And I want to thank God for the worship. And Pastor Hosea for heading it up. Thank you so much. Amen. <laughs> um, I also want to highlight our intercessory prayer ministry. And I don't know if Nassar is here tonight, but, but I, I really thank God for Nassar and, and, and all the intercessors. Man, you guys, you guys are incredible. You guys are incredible. You know, we don't see them. But I'll tell you, we, I don't see my heart either, but without it, I'm dead. All right? So a lot of things we don't see are much more important than the things that we do see. And the intercessors are so much more, it's so much like that. You know, we don't see them, but I'll tell you something, we have a team, when, they, when, when, when you send your prayer requests to these guys, they pray. They pray and they pray and they pray. Amen, until something happens. So let's give it up to intercessors, amen. Also, all those who participated in our Tom Zoom rooms. <laughs> we had prophetic rooms, prayer rooms, pastors' discussion rooms. Yeah, you guys had me sweating with all those questions. <laughs> you know, I just want to thank the media team. Um, amen. You guys, you guys have served, have served, have served. And if it's one ministry that definitely doesn't stop going now, it's the media, right? And um, you continue to provide relevant and quality presentations to us so that we don't ever miss a beat in ministering to our local, even national and worldwide audience. Amen. So let's give it up again for the, for the media team. Andrew Nichols. Amen. And last but not least, the Strive Live. That's on Tuesday nights, guys. I want you guys. Uh, what did I say? I said Strive. <laughs> How you say it? T-H-I Alright, T-H-I Give me a bottle of water yeah. Praise God, Amen Let's give it up for all the ministries Okay. They said, don't forget the ushers. Yeah. 
Thank you, Mark, for all your good work, you know. Um, I know you had a hard shoes to, uh, 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 shoes to fill there with, with Pastor Rodney being the, you know, in charge before. But you know, let me say something, you did it well. Amen. You filled those shoes well, buddy. You did a tremendous job. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can try. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Let me begin. Let me see what's the time. Oh, I've got lots of time. <laughs> Let me begin by declaring what I believe in my heart for this upcoming year, 2022. And if we could begin, I want to show you the script here. Proverbs 20. 22. Proverbs 20, 22. And I think it has a lot to say about this year that we are about to approach 2022. It says, do not say I will recompense evil Wait, say wait. Wait for the Lord. And he will save you. This is going to be the scripture for the year. I'm going to tell you why. You see that word wait? It comes from the Hebrew word kava. And that word wait, kava, means, one of its meaning is to bind together. So this scripture is, encourage, is encouraging us to bind together with the Lord. Wait for him. Bind yourself to him. In other words, Become one, bind. It, it, it actually talks about uh, uh, tr the, the, this word cover means it, it, to tread, to wrap a tread together, like how you wrap a rope. You twine. So God wants us this year to bind with Him, to be in step with Him, to walk together with him and he says if we do that this year successfully he will save us that word save is the word yasha and it means avenged it means deliver it means victory God wants to make us a victorious people in this upcoming year. God is getting set to avenge us. I want you guys to realize That we have been under attack. Let me try this side. How about you guys realize that we've been under attack a bit? Especially in the area of COVID-19. That's an attack, guys. That's not an act of God. 
COVID-19 is not an act of God. God has come to give us a life. It is the thief that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I believe that this year, if we walk together with him, if we bind ourselves with him, if we become one with God, if we be become a people that will think his thoughts, speak his words, do as he does, we are going to see God avenge us. We are going to see God make us a victorious people. We are going to see God deliver us and take us to a whole new level that we have never been before. That is for this year. Well, you guys look really happy about that. I know, I know, it's been a tough year. <laughs> I can feel that thing. And yeah, I hear people say, oh, we, 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 we just have to learn to live with it. No, I'm not going to live with it. I'm going to kill it. I am not going to learn to live with sickness. I'm going to destroy sickness. Until my last breath, I'm going to be against that devil called sickness. Why? Because Jesus didn't learn to live with it. And I want to announce to you tonight, the reason you are here is because God wants you to hear that. God wants you to know that this year, you are going to be encountering victories you have never encountered before. God wants you to know that he's going to avenge you because some of you guys have suffered loss. And he's going to avenge you. Amen? This year, more promises, more fulfilled dreams are going to be fulfilled this year than any other year we've had before in our lives. I'm going to say it again. More promises and dreams are going to be fulfilled this year than any other year before. Amen. Amen. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I want us to look at one thing that the devil uses to keep us from fulfilling our dreams. And that one thing I want to look at tonight is disappointment. Disappointment. How much of us would say 2021 was a bit of a disappointment? Some of you guys enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm going to join with you guys. There, there, there has been some disappointments. Because... Being honest with you, I didn't expect to go through what we went through. It was not on my expectation list. So there has been some disappointments this year. Has been disappointing. Many have suffered loss this year. Many, many. Will it be loved ones? Will it be jobs? Will it be... Uh, Relationships this year was, was filled with some disappointments. And disappointments tends to rob people 
of the courage to face the future. Let me say it again. Disappointments robs people of courage to face the future. Why? Because disappointments, it is anchored in yesterday. What happened? And the enemy wants us to focus on those, those disappointments because when we focus on it, it keeps us in the past and that prevents us from looking forward. It prevents us from having hope for a future. And he used these, these disappointments to bring us to a, to a place where we live in yesterday. But let me say this to you guys. We were born for tomorrow. We were not designed to live yesterday. We were born for tomorrow. We were designed to make a difference today so we can affect the future. Amen. Look at Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. Paul says, for I am persuaded, and this is talking about the love of God, amen? He said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present. Things what? Nor things. Nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be, be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Do you realize that he said things present and things to come cannot separate us from the love of God? But he did not mention the past because the enemy I mean the past would not be able to separate us from the love of God but if we focus on the past we will it will diminish how we see the love of God and we start to doubt how much God really loves us So we have to look, we have to be careful of what disappointments can do. Amen? Because as you guys know, you might, might, I just experienced that. I went, as you guys knew, I went up to, to, to spend Thanksgiving with my family. And everything we planned went the opposite way. My dad fell ill. He got a heart attack. He died for eight minutes. <laughs> they were able to bring him back. And I, I mean, they just threw off everything right before Thanksgiving, right before that turkey. And the cranberry and the yams, the candy yams, and the collard greens, and, and the, the, the pies, the Pumpkin pies. <laughs> you know, the enemy wanted me to just focus on all those things that didn't happen. You see, when you focus on all those things that didn't happen, you lose sight of what could happen. Amen? See, so you want me to focus, oh, you didn't have a good time. I even stayed, I, actually I stayed three weeks more than I, than I planned to stay. <laughs> and my little wife was crying. <laughs> you see? 
So, I, you know, and, and he keep, you know, making me feel, it's so disappointing. But I had to pull myself together and say, you know what? God was good to me. Because I'm alive. My dad is still alive. He's in hospital, but he's still alive. <laughs> he was dead for eight minutes. He could have stayed like that. Amen. And I had to navigate. I said, no, I'm not going to be disappointed. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to be thankful for God's goodness. Amen. God is good. Let me say this, guys. You see disappointments? Disappointments is the mother of depression. Look at Proverbs 13 and verse 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred, disappointments will make the heart sick. In other words, disappointment makes us vulnerable to spiritual sickness, spiritual disease. Spiritual diseases like, like anxiety and fear and worry, depression, oppression. These are spiritual sicknesses that opens up when we, get, when we embrace disappointments. Your heart becomes sick. Disappointment is like a thief. It robs you of joy and purpose and vision. And we have to be able to navigate through these times because I want to tell you something. On the next side of this storm of disappointment is the dream you're looking for. Amen. Amen. Because I want to tell you guys, you know, disappointments will come. They will come. But we have to know how to navigate through them. You know, just over a year ago, my wife went through a very tough period in her life with someone. For almost a year, that person was extremely abusive, verbally abusive to my wife. And even at times, attempted to be physically abusive. But I want to say something. My wife never, never allowed offense or that allow that disappointment to take her away from the love that she had for that person. And because she was able to navigate through those, that disappointing year, now she's living on the next side of having a great relationship with that person. And I watch it up close. She never lose sight of the big picture. She never lose sight of that dream of having a great relationship with that person. Even though that person was verbally abusive, did everything in her strength to bring hurt and sometimes harm to my wife. Yet, she never lose sight of that person's relationship with her. We have to be able to navigate through those times. So don't allow disappointment to disappoint you from your appointment 
with what God has for you. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you guys this. It is not possible to get where God wants us to go or to be as a church, as an individual, as a family, if we don't navigate successfully in disappointment. Let me tell, let me, let me tell you guys this. Things won't always go as you expect. <laughs> Amen. But those times are times I believe God uses to strengthen his people. Those are the times that I believe God uses for us to get closer to him and learn to trust him and his promises. Amen. You know, I think about, <clears throat> let me give you an example. Even the children of Israel, they were delivered from Egypt, go, and they had to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land, right? A land of milk and honey, your dreams, your vision, your purpose. That's where God wants us to be, right? But while they were being delivered and being in the wilderness, it wasn't exactly what they expected, apparently. And they started to complain about God and they complained about their leader, Moses. And they said, oh, it's better you'd leave us in Egypt. At least we'll be, we, could, we can taste garlic and stuff like that. <laughs> they complained, why? Because of disappointment. And that disappointment was linking them back to the past. So much so they wanted to go back to Egypt. You have to be careful of disappointments because it's going to pull you back to where you once was and keep you from the promised land where God wants you to live. A place flowing with milk and honey. That is what God has prepared for every one of us. That is what we are going to embark on in this upcoming year. I'm going to say it again. You might say, man, this preacher, he's crazy. That's okay. They said the same thing about Jesus. They said the same thing about John the Baptist. Let me tell you something. This upcoming year, you, if you stay close with God, if you walk hand in hand with him, you are going to come in to a promised land that you've never been before. And that's okay if you don't believe it. I'll believe it for you. Amen, because I know that's why you're here tonight. I know that's why God brought you here tonight, to let you know that this year, he's going to bring you into a promised land. So don't allow, do not allow the disappointments of 2021 to keep you from going forward. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. But look back at that script here, there, Proverbs. It says, hope deferred make the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. A dream fulfilled is a tree of life. What does the tree of life represent? You guys remember in the garden? Adam and Eve, they sinned. And when they sin, when they partake of the other tree and they saw what happened, they tried to go towards the tree of life in their sin. And God had to put an angel to stop them from partaking of the tree of life. Why? Because if they had partake of the fruit of the tree of life, they would have eternally remained how they will, and there would have been no redemption for them. Right? Because the tree of lies represents eternal purpose.
Amen? So let's look, let, let's, let's look at this now. The tree of life gives eternal purpose. It says here that dreams fulfill is a tree of life. So I want to suggest to you tonight that dreams, that dreams fulfill is part of your eternal purpose. That's what it says there. It's the tree of life. And if the tree of life represents eternal purpose, then fulfilled dreams is our eternal purpose. So what is it saying? God wants us to be a people who have our dreams fulfilled. I don't care what this year did to you. Do not lay down your dream. Because you were designed by God to have those dreams fulfilled. You were designed by God to experience the fulfillment of all the promises that he has made to you. The children of Israel was being taken into a promised land. You know why? Because he's a God of promise. Do you know that there is over 7,700 promises in the Bible? There's 7,700 promises in the Bible. Do you also know that it is impossible for God to lie? So if he promised you something, it's because he is more than willing to fulfill it. Amen. 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 God is not a liar. It is impossible for God to lie. But many of us, because of disappointment, we have lost our capacity to dream. Let me tell you guys something. You see, a promise is an invitation into a relational journey to co-labor with God to see his nature revealed. Let me say that again. A promise, when God makes a promise to you, he is inviting you into a relational journey to co-labor with him to see his nature reveal. Let me give you an example. Just a little while ago, as, as Pastor Jose was saying, you know, at the end of every year, you know, we, we give people the opportunity to sow into the next year. Why do we sow? Because we want a harvest. <laughs> Amen? How much do you guys want a harvest? Well, you ain't gonna get it if you don't sow. You can wish it all you want. <laughs> you have to sow. As a man soweth, that's how he reaps. Amen. And I want to reap a harvest. So God wants me to prosper. So look at the scripture verse in Luke 16, verse 11. It says, and if you are untrustworthy with worldly wealth, like money, right? That's worldly. Who will trust you with true riches, with the true riches of heaven? You know what's true riches? True riches are riches that money can't buy. Things that money can't buy, that's true riches. So I have to be faithful with my seed to be able to get the true riches. That's what the scripture is saying. So God, because of that promise, 
that he has given to me that I can have true riches. No, I could co-labor with him. He is bringing me into a, a relationship with him so I could co-labor with this promise so that when he blesses me, which he will, if you don't believe it, I, I do. He, when he blesses me and people see the blessing of God on me, now his nature can be revealed. Amen? Why? Because God blesses me so I can be a blessing. And I just use money, but it's not only in money. It could be in any area. It could be in relationships. It, 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 it could be for healing. It could be for deliverance. Whatever you're believing for, whatever that promise covers it, God wants you to co-labor with him with that promise to bring it to pass. And when it comes to pass, you demonstrate his nature. That is why Jesus came. Jesus came so he can reveal the nature of the Father. You guys agree with that? Jesus came so he can reveal the nature of the Father. He healed. So he can reveal that the nature of the Father is a healer. He did miracles so that we can realize that the Father is a miracle working God. He provided fish, multiplied fish and bread. Why? So that God, we can still see that God is still Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. Amen? But look at this. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. So we have the same purpose in our lives like Jesus had, which was to reveal the Father. We have the same purpose to reveal the Father to this world. And the only way we can do that is when we co-labor with him. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself. I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. That is how he did what he did, by being in agreement with the father. So I'm telling you guys, this is a year that we have to come into agreement with God. And we will be able to reveal the Father, the nature of our Heavenly Father to this world. Amen. And He's going to do that by allowing you to fulfill, to walk in the fulfillment of promises that you're believing for. People, get ready to do the impossible. Amen. God wants us to become living testimonies. Amen. God is looking for that co-laborer. God is looking for the agreement. He's looking for the two to be made one. And that's us. That is why he has called us his bride. Why? Because he wants, in a marriage, two people becomes one. And when they become one, they produce
And he wants us to produce. He wants us to show proof that he's alive and well. But we must come into agreement. We must become one with him this year. Amen. Look at 2 Corinthians 1 verses 18 to 20. It says, but as surely as God is faithful, say God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been what? Always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, watch this, through him, the amen, the what? The amen, the agreement <laughs> is spoken by who? By who? By us. To the glory of God. Let me say this, guys. When a promise that we are believing for is not manifested, is not fulfilled, the problem is not on God's side. Because he has already said, yes, it is yours. So let's be honest. Let's be, let, let, let's be, be candid. Let's, let's get real. If the problem is not God, then it has to be the other side. Those that have to say the Amen. Those that have to come into agreement. Not those that allow disappointments to cause them to doubt his goodness. Because a lot of us hide behind those disappointments. And what we hide behind those disappointments is that I don't know if God really loved me. Because he didn't do this for me and he didn't do that for me. And that's what the devil keeps whispering in your ear. So, Pastor Cook, why it is my prayers are not being answered? Well, it may be you have to change the way you pray. Because again, the problem is not with God. Can I be honest with you guys tonight? The problem is not God. The problem is with us. Because if our prayers don't move us, it's not going to move. Let me say something, guys. This world is not waiting for the Avengers. <laughs> this world is not waiting for Superman. This world is not even waiting for Neil <laughs> to destroy the Matrix. Oh, that's Hollywood. This world is waiting for us. Yeah. 
Look at Romans 8, verses 19 to 21. It says, for the creation, that's the world. The creation waits in eager expectation for the what? That's me and you. To be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. This world is waiting for us. For us to do what? To manifest the nature of our Father. Didn't Jesus change everything? Come on, somebody. So that is what this world is waiting for. That is what creation is waiting for. For us to be manifested so we could change everything. What an honor God has given to us. So we could co-labor with him to bring his purposes to pass. You know God can do it all on his own? <laughs> but he has given us an opportunity to co-labor with him to bring his purpose to pass. What an honor. And I'll tell you why. Because he wants to reveal to this world that he is father. But a father cannot be revealed unless he has children. And that ch those children is who represent or show for the nature of his father. Of their father. And when they see the kids, you know, they say, ah, there's a Ramdin. You see? That is a Ramdin. So when people look at us, ah, <laughs> that is a Christian. That is a Jesus person. Look at them. Look, look, look. People, let me tell you this. How some, I am on some charts, right? WhatsApp chats, and people probably still can't believe that I'm a pastor. When they hear that I am a pastor, they have, they'll be saying, wow, there really is a God. <laughs> my mother, and I know she'll hear this when they, when they post this, but my mother, and my wife is my witness, just told my wife, that Kirk was so miserable that she used to wait for him to reach home so she could get a workout. <laughs> My little Chinese mother <laughs> used to, she said, Kirk, that was my workout. When you come home and I see and I hear what the neighbors say about you, time for a workout. That's how my mother said, you sweat. <laughs> That's what she said. You was my sweat. <laughs> when I run in down with a broomstick and pelting them in normal cup it in your head. <laughs> Why do I say all that? Anyhow. Huh? Revealing the Father, okay. Guys, let me end with this. We have an invitation tonight to believe for the impossible. Amen. 
Because what we're seeing today is not okay. It's not. The kingdom of God has have suffered some violence. And I think in 2022, the violent will have to take this thing back by force. Amen. 2022 is the year of dreams fulfilled. So you have breakthrough. But only it's going to happen as we come into agreement with God. Come into oneness with our God. But that only happens. I'm going to say, I want you guys to hear this. The main thing that's going to bring us back into that oneness, into that agreement, into that close walk with God. If we want to see this year be a year of promises and dreams fulfilled, we have to increase in prayer. The increase of God's promises fulfilled the increase in being seeing dreams come to pass is linked with an increase of our prayer life. Because that's the area that we come one with him. When we have fellowship with him. When we have koinonia with him. That's where we become one with him when we have intimacy with him in our times of prayer. You know, one I heard a pastor say this. He said, if, uh, if you want to know if a church is popular, Sunday morning is filled up. <laughs> if you want to know if the pastor is popular, Sunday night, Service is filled up. But he said, if you want to know if God is popular, the prayer meetings are filled up. And that made me think. That made me think. Amen. You know, it's amazing to me when you look at the disciples when they were with Jesus. I mean, they saw him heal the sick. They saw him raise the dead. They saw him walk on water. They saw him commanded the elements, make the wind stop. You know, and they never asked them, Lord, how, 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 how is raised the dead? You never see that question in the Bible. How, 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 how do you heal the sick? How do you stop the wind from blowing like that? How do you walk on water? They never ask them that. You know what they ask them? Lord, teach us to pray. Because they recognize that there was a link with all those things that he did to pray. When they saw him separated himself, when they saw him walked up into the mountains or go into the garden to pray, they saw that there was a link with what he did there and what he did across here. And if we are to have a year full of miracles and promises fulfilled, we will have to increase in our prayer life. We'll have to come back and say, Lord, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to pray so I can see this happen. See me, teach me how to pray so I can know how this happens and what to do to make that happen. We have to increase 
you know, pray. And we will this year. Amen? Let's stand. Hallelujah. Did we learn something tonight, guys? Amen. Amen. This year is going to be a year where our dreams are going to be fulfilled, guys. Don't allow the disappointments of, of 2021 to cause you to look back to cause you to think that God doesn't care this is going to be a fruitful year a year of great advancement a year of dreams fulfilled a year where we see promises that we've been standing on come to pass. Amen. I want us to pray. I want to pray for you that God will give us a grace this year to pray. Amen. I want you guys want God to fill you with that grace. Let's keep those hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, give us this night a grace that will enable us to pray like we've never prayed before. Father, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray so that we can see the results that we've been desiring. Teach us to pray, God. Give us that grace, God, that will cause us to contend in the spirit for those promises that you have already said yes to. Let our amen be strong. Let our amen bring us into agreement with you, God. Father, we give you praise tonight. For causing every one of us to become a person of prayer. A person who can bring heaven to the earth. A person who can change the course of history as we know it. We were born for the impossible. We were born for tomorrow. We were born to bring change. So Father, fill us with your grace right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's thank him for it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. How much do you guys struggle sometimes with disappointment let's raise your hand that's all of us let's put our hands up again Father in the name of Jesus we come against the effects of disappointment in the name of Jesus Father we sever our ties with the past we have dis decided this night not to look back but to press forward towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. We are forgetting those things that are behind. Father, we give you praise right now for the hope. The hope that you have given every one of us. And we pray, oh God, that our faith will arise to lay hold to those promises that are before us. And we give you thanks, God. We break the power of those disappointments 
in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. And Amen. <laughs> and Amen. You know the good thing about the past? It's the past. <laughs> Let me say that again. The good thing about the past, it's the past. Leave it there. Leave it there. That's why our eyes are in front. <laughs> we are to go forward. We are to advance. Amen. But I want to, my last request here is, you might be here tonight. I say, you know what, Pastor Cook? I want to see my dreams fulfilled. I want to experience the promises of God in my life. I want to see them come to pass. But I've never accepted Jesus. And I want to make Him my Lord. I want to make Him my Savior. I want to become a son of God or, or a daughter of God tonight. If that's you, just lift your hand. I want to pray for you. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see those hands. Let's leave those hands lifted. And I want every one of us to pray along with them. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, we come to you. We thank you for sending Jesus to die in our place. Father, cleanse me in the blood of Jesus. Forgive me for all my sins. I give my life to you. I declare that you are my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you right now for filling me with your spirit and making me part of the great family of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. <laughs> See, I tell you that this year is going to start off with miracles. And that was the greatest miracle that just happened. Because you were translated from death into eternal life. Amen. Let's thank God again. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Well, we went over 18 minutes. It's now 18 minutes after 11. So I want to bless you guys as we dismiss. Amen. Father, let's thank you for your people. I thank you, God, that you've brought them into this place because you know that the dreams that you have placed in their heart, you want to fulfill every one of them. So Father, I pray right now, God, that you'd fill us with that grace so that we can walk hand in hand with you, so that we can become one with you, so that we can wait upon you. And you've promised that if we wait upon you, you will save us, you will deliver us, you will avenge us and you will make us a victorious people. Father, thank you that this year will be a year full of victories. In the name of Jesus, I bless your people. Take everyone home safely. Keep sickness and disease away from them. In the name of Jesus, I bless your people. In Jesus' name, have a happy new year. Ha, ha, ha.